We're back in the toy room. I, it's been a while, I know. And don't mention the Unfinished Ninja Turtles series. I just wasn't liking the way those videos were turning out. Maybe some point I'll revisit that footage. But today I'm very, very excited to show you these guys. Now, if you watched my staff picks video about Transformers Fall of Cybertron, you'll know it's one of my favorite games of all time. I love Transformers. I would not be the person I am today if it wasn't for Transformers. I wouldn't work at nostalgic video games if it wasn't for Transformers. Probably wouldn't love video games as much if it wasn't for the game War for Cybertron and Fall of Cybertron, and to a lesser extent, Cybertron Adventures. So when my favorite things, video games, toys, and Transformers all merge into one beautiful thing, I just, I love it. I love it so much. I had to reel in my Transformers collecting, and I really only limit it now to G1, Animated, and the Fall of Cybertron, more for Cybertron games. And the Bumblebee Cybertron Studio Series figures and a couple other various figures. But, but look, we aren't here to nitpick my lifestyle. We are here to look at the brand new Transformers Studio Series Gamer Edition Bumblebee. Why did they call it Gamer Edition? because I wanted you to know it was from a video game. That's right, this is the Gamer Edition for gamers, made for gamers, by gamers, based on a gamer game to be played with by gamers. When I was a kid, I saved up my allowance to go to Toys R Us and buy the three pack with Optimus, Bumblebee, and Megatron from the War for Cybertron game. And that is this figure right here. This is my childhood Transformers War for Cybertron Bumblebee. When they announced this figure, I was skeptical based on the press images and I was excited to get him in my own hands and see how he really stacked up to this original figure, which was one of my favorites as a kid. This design for Bumblebee is pretty much the definitive design for me. Part of why I love Bumblebee so much is because that Bumblebee design from the beginning of that movie clearly took a lot of inspiration from this design here. The big chunky tires on his arms, like shield discs, like they're, they're like a, what those things? Um... A buckler. It's like leg bucklers. He's got the Energon swords and he's just this little like a little dude and he's got attitude. This this is just peak Bumblebee design. And honestly, we haven't really had a perfect figure of him. Yes, I love this original generations figure with my entire heart, but it's definitely not perfect. For one thing, it's way too big. He's taller than the Optimus Prime that they released alongside him. And he's got parts that don't really clip in. He's he's a little fidgety. And his transformation is obnoxious. And half the time just doesn't even work. Nothing pegs in like it should. And it's just a fiddly mess. With Transformers, having a fiddly transformation can destroy an entire figure for me. But lucky for B here, he's got cool enough paint applications, a beautiful enough design that the figure itself it holds up for me. I'm willing to take the fiddly transformation. And that was something I was super excited to see with what they did here. And I really don't know which one I like more. But before we deep dive, yes, these two guys are based on the same model of the same character from War for Cybertron. But this one right here, the Generations one that I'm comparing to him, is the exclusive paint job from the Toys R Us 3-pack. So he has blue Energon accents instead of red like the actual design from the game. The Toys R Us 3-pack was Optimus and Bumblebee were like energonized and they had like these special paint applications, but Megatron had dark energon energy lightning purple stuff all over him. They look really sick and honestly better paint jobs than the standard releases of those figures. But for the most part, the paint is not going to be discussed in this video because technically this is a more expensive limited release special edition version of the figure and I just don't have the standard release Bumblebee to show you. Personally, I do like the blue accents better than the red because I think the red looks a little too evil, but then also the Autobots color is red, so I get why they did red and not blue, which is closer to the purple of the Decepticons colors, but when I do these Transformers videos, I don't write a script. I just sit in front of the camera and like ramble for 45 minutes and then edit it. Um, so let's see how this goes. Also, the price points aren't really comparable because I think this guy came in like a $75 to $80 bundle with two other figures and extra accessories, where this guy was just a $25.99 standard release deluxe figure. But right off the bat, where this guy really shines for me is his accessories. One of the coolest part of the War for Cybertron games is that your arms like transform into the different guns. You're not just picking up and holding guns. 
you you like scan them and it's like whoosh, whoosh, and that kind of really bugged me with all the original figures that they made that just had slightly weirdly redesigned versions of the guns so that they could put a handle on it and stick in their hand this bumblebee did uh, a kind of adequate job at replicating the See, this is like the, the plasma launcher, missile launcher. I forget this one. But I mean, it's kind of neat. It's got a cool sort of bumblebee design and it looks good, but it's a dinky little blaster. And is it really as cool as having a gun arm? No, which is where this guy really shines. All of these Gamer Edition Transformers figures have removable forearms that you can replace with all the different guns from all the other figures. So this Bumblebee was released in a wave with Optimus Prime and Breakdown? Yeah, Breakdown. They also come with other weapons that can work and interchange with the different figures so you can equip different weapons on them and that's just awesome. This is the gun that Bumblebee has when you first see him in the game, so that's why I have that with him. And along with that gun, he also came with this Neuron, uh, the, the Neutron, not Neutron Assault Rifle, this is... This is the Scout Blaster. This is like a little sniper rifle. And he also came with his Energon Blade. Now, all of these accessories are just molded in dark gray plastic, which is kind of poopy, but at least he has three of them. He has the three weapons that I associate most with him in these games, and I'm so happy that they didn't leave anything out. It also comes with just the standard forearm, so you can take off the gun and just put on his normal arm. Now, some people might consider that parts forming because yes, technically it is parts forming and that standard arm is required for the transformation. But honestly, for the gimmick of the game, having, you know, the arm turn into the gun, I'm willing to take the trade off. And I really, really like how these weapons were implemented. They're all sculpted very well and look exactly like the weapons in the game. They just are missing paint apps which honestly having them just molded in gray plastic makes it easier to interchange between all the different figures. So you don't really have to worry about, you know, the gun having yellow bumblebee accents on it when you give it to the purple and black breakdown. This bumblebee has three accessories. This one has the one dinky blaster, but watch out. Flip out Energon Blade. That is just integrated weapons. They're, they're integrated into the figure, into the transformation. You don't have to worry about losing them. You don't have you know, a handful, you don't need to find like a Ziploc bag or like a drawer to keep these in. You, you've got the actual translucent molded blade in there, uh, especially it being, you know, like an Energon blade. Had it, having it molded in that translucent plastic is huge. And that one feature alone was what just blew me away as a kid and is what automatically made this figure one of my favorite figures of all of Transformers. I absolutely love this Energon Blade. I can't get over enough. I always have him posed on my shelf with this Energon Blade out because it's so cool. It's like his stingers. Is he a bumblebee? Get it? Yeah. So even though this bumblebee just really has the one accessory, he technically has three because he's got dual blades. That's just, you can have him dual wielding his stingers. Oh, that's so cool. So yes, technically, even though this Bumblebee has less accessories, personally, I feel like they're on the same level with the accessories. The quality of this Bumblebee's accessories compared with the quantity of this one's, they even out for me. Both of them do have integrated weapon storage with a few different pegs in places. The weapon storage on this guy is a bit more obvious because he just sort of pegs the guns onto his back. Yeah, you just kind of have these big bulky blasters on his back. Whereas this guy has the blades that flip back in entirely and you can actually lift up his backpack here and plug the blaster right in there, both in robot mode and vehicle mode. So his weapon storage is also a bit more well integrated. So yeah, in the end, accessories, it's gonna have to be a toss up. Next up for me is size and the Gamer Edition wins out hands down. The original generations figure is kind of the standard deluxe class size. They were all pretty much the same size and in the end, Transformers never really cared much about scale anyways, but the only official War for Cybertron Optimus we ever got was also a deluxe class, so he was the same size as Bumblebee. Now you could say that's a fault of the Optimus figure, but I think it's both. This Bumblebee figure is just way too big. This guy, I think, is still maybe just a little too big compared to some figures, but compared to the Optimus and the breakdown that they released alongside him, he is the perfect size. 
He's smaller, more compact, not quite as lanky and gangliest. He's got that bulky War for Cybertron design. I mean, he's just a little guy, okay? Bumblebee's supposed to be a little guy. So size, Studio Series wins out. But to get that size, I do think the actual design of the figure did have to take some sacrifices. I don't really know how to put words to all of the thoughts I have about the specific designs of these two figures, so um, I'm just gonna try. With the first press image that they released of this guy, He's posed in such a way that, like, he looks like he's got, like, he's got a, a droopy chest situation going on. Compared to the Generations figure, you can kind of tell there that it seems to stick out a little too far and also go down a bit too much. It also kind of gives him this sort of hunchbacked look. The contour of the front of his vehicle mode goes past the back of his neck and then leads into this big flap that hangs up almost past the horns on the top of his head that give him this kind of mm, look you know now this figure also has a pretty big backpack and that contour continues up that way as well but he has a bit more of a defined profile with the shoulders and the head and horns in the sculpted detail category both of them are great studio series is pretty much transformers premiere line at the moment you know premiere budget line hasbro line not masterpiece Again, I'm not going to talk about the paint, but in just the design category, I think the Generations wins. Because of the transformation and the compromises that they had to make to actually get the Studio Series 1 to fit in that tiny little size, it just kind of impedes the final look of the figure. I think the biggest problem, besides those shoulders, is sort of the sides of his chest here, where form the front of the wheel wells. During the transformation, they kind of like fold in and it gives this sort of weird protrusion and there's these panel lines here that just don't quite line up in the end really sort of sacrifice that streamlined round little small boy design that bumblebee had in the games so yeah generations wins all right so right now it's two and two what's the last thing we've got transformation Tell me I gotta transform both of these guys. Now here you see me transforming both of these guys in times 10 speed. Uh, both of these figures have different parts that are on ball joints or just little sort of hinges that like to pop off a lot. Uh, the generations more so than the studio series, but I feel like the flaps that sort of form the backpack and top and back half of the car on the studio series figure pop off constantly. The Generations figure, the feet and some of the leg parts like to pop off, but uh, it's a, a bit more easy to handle. And here I finish up with the Studio Series figure. It took five, almost six minutes for the full transformation. That's not terrible. A little on the lengthy side. You know, if you're playing with this figure as a kid or if you're trying to transform it, uh, it does take a little while. But yeah, you can see you can peg his weapons on top of his head and you can still use the weapon storage on the back. And we are still going here with the Generations. These legs fold up and are supposed to sort of tuck in nicely with the, the feet looking weird and sort of hugging together. And it just doesn't work. It's, it's, the instructions are super vague and difficult to make out. And this is the correct way to transform this figure. I've, I've made sure my entire life as a kid, I thought I was transforming his wrong, him wrong. Well, filming this video, I thought I was transforming him wrong, but no. His transformation just doesn't really work. And in the end, you get this final product that it looks all right. It rolls, but still has a bunch of panels that aren't plugging in. The fruits of my labor, I'll be totally real. Both of these guys are pretty finicky, but in the end, the Generations figure is way finickier. Fin finick? Fi Finnicker, finny, finnickier, finnickier, way finnickier. <laughs> the Generations figure is way more finicky than the Studio Series figure. At the end of the transformation for both of these guys, there's a bunch of different panels that all sort of need to snap in to kind of tuck everything in and get this nice little chubby chibi sort of VW Bug Fiat looking space car. And on both of them, it doesn't really work. This one, I mean, you can get it to work. There's a few different tabs and stuff, but there really isn't as much 
you know, joints and plastic and, and mass to this that pushes up on everything. And I do actually think the mechanism of the sides of his chest that come out for the wheel wells really helps with that problem, even though it compromises some of the robot modes design there. Which actually, in researching for this, this one looks more like the concept art from War for Cybertron than it does his actual model, which... Interesting. But this isn't a figure based on concept art. It's gamer edition based on the game. It's not concept art edition. Hasbro, you've done it before. Black Series model figures, even LEGO doesn't. You just cheated. I mean, there's 3D models from the game, and that's kind of how Studio Series was originally marketed, was that they'd take the actual CAD files and use those from the movies to make the, the actual figures. But then they started doing the Studio Series 86, which, what are you doing? Just, you know, taking a bunch of animation cells and, like, building a 3D image? Nah, nah, I think they're cheating. Anyways, I do think what they were going for with the Generations figure is better. There's more paint apps, which again, I can't really hold against this figure, but it feels more like a complete idea, whereas this one feels a little more like it's a transform where we have to make it transform. Both of them have a lot of panel lining and sort of exposed joints and screws and middle ding hoppers and who's a what's it's, but it's a really complicated transformation and a difficult sort of rounded organic design to nail down in an engineered figure. I think with the Generations one, they bit off more than they could chew. With this one, they kept things a bit more simple and gave us a solid little vehicle mode and a solid robot mode, where this has a fantastic robot mode and uh, uh, it's almost there. It's almost there. If this transformation actually worked, I would think it's better than this one. There's like five tabs on both sides with the legs, arms, and the back construction that all have to peg in at the same time. And when you peg them in on one side, they pop out on the other side. And this is just like, this, like holding this is like holding a grenade. It is a ball of potential energy. There's just so much friction and like density in this thing. It's just like burst at the seams and it inhibits what you can do with this vehicle mode. So in the end, I got to give the vehicle mode the studio series. So that brings it to three point studio series, two point generations, but we forgot one of the most important categories of all, nostalgia. Look, you can hate me all you want for this. It's my video and I get to decide who wins and who wins. Both of them do because generations bumblebee absolutely wins out in nostalgia. This figure is just everything that made 2010, 2011 Transformers so amazing. Beautiful sculpts, high quality plastics, crazy wild, unique engineering, not constant reused engineering, just switch some of the designs and the head sculpt and it's a new figure. This guy is so unique, so classic and beautiful and it's just breathes the life that these games had. But I am so, so happy to finally be getting more official War for Cybertron, Fall of Cybertron figures because War for Cybertron had some great figures that were just sublime figures in the Generations line. The Fall of Cybertron figures, that was when Transformers toys started taking a dip in quality. Lower plastic quality, less plastic usage, less paint apps. Don't get me wrong, I love that toy line and I have all of them. Shit, I have all of them. Wow, but those toys feel like budget options. Then you have third-party companies like Planet X that make... Like, if I could own every single Planet X figure, I would. They are probably some of the coolest Transformers figures ever made, and my favorite third-party figures. And usually, I mean, I love supporting the actual brand itself. I love Transformers, and third-party figures sometimes get some real illegal gray area. But Planet X... They give these designs what they deserve. And honestly, these Studio Series figures, they're doing them justice. That Optimus Prime looks awesome. I have it pre-ordered on Entertainment Earth. It hasn't it hasn't shipped yet, but I'll definitely be doing a comparison video when that one comes out, especially if this video does good. So, so you know, smash the like button if you like this video. Let me know if you want to see that Optimus video when it when, when, when in due time. So yeah, neither of these guys are perfect. So seeing these designs that 
are from my favorite games, have new life breathed into them with new engineering, new sculpts, a whole new feel. It's weird because I have such nostalgia for what they originally accomplished, but I'm so excited to see what they can do now. No, none of them are going to be Planet X level, you know, $100, $150 masterpiece level figures. I don't expect that. This Bumblebee gave me exactly what I wanted to get out of it. So if I were to tell you to hunt one of these down, which one would it be? This guy on the secondary market can be kind of expensive and hard to find. This guy is already being resold for way more than MSRP, but if you're lucky you can still find them on GameStop shelves. So if you have a hole in your collection, you need to fill it with a War for Cybertron Bumblebee, this Studio Series guy will serve the purpose and so definitely worth picking up for that $25, $26.99 price point. But if you can find the Generations figure, I still really suggest it. And honestly, if you already have this guy, I'd still suggest picking this one up because they feel like unique figures. Even though they're the same character with the same character design, they do things differently. And it feels really nice to have that. That's one of my favorite things about Transformers. You know, I can have however many Black Series Luke Skywalker figures on my shelf, and they're all still going to be Luke Skywalker. I like the way Bespin Luke looks. I'm probably not going to pick up Farm Boy Luke or X-Wing Pilot Luke or Jedi Knight Luke because... I don't know, I like the gray jumpsuit. I like my Luke looking like a Ghostbuster. Well, with Bumblebee here, it's the same design, but it's fundamentally a different toy, a different figure that delivers a completely different play experience. Not that I'm playing with him. I'm playing with him. Optimus, look out! <laughs> Am I nothing but a vessel? for the media that I consume? Yes. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know because I love making toy videos and I'd love to make more. But I know our name's also Nostalgic Video Games. But if you didn't know, our physical store, Nostalgic Video Games in Florence, Kentucky, also has an entire second little storefront connected to our first storefront that is all vintage toys. We have tons of collectibles, loose vintage toys, complete in-box, newer figures, as well as a pretty hefty Transformer shelf. When I started working at Nostalgic Video Games, my number one resolution was to make sure that I rounded out our Transformers section, and I mean, not to like toot my own horn or anything, but like I, I feel like I've done a pretty good job. Have I done a good job? Customers, let me know. Have I done a good job? Leave a comment. We also have our new online store, NostalgicVideoGames.com. It is totally up and running. You can order games, consoles, accessories, controllers, cables, and quite a good deal of our new sealed collectibles from the comfort of your own home, and uh, that's pretty cool. The link is in the description. You should check that out. If there's any games you're looking for, look them up, see if we have them, and if not, keep an eye on it, because chances are we'll get one eventually. If you see one pop up, then order it. You can have it shipped straight to your house, or select free in-store pickup, and you can just come pick it up at Nostalgic Video Games. I'm so excited to bring the joy of Nostalgic Video Games to a wider audience than just Florence, Kentucky. So thank you for tuning in, and I will see you guys next time.